Hey, it's me, Big P, and I wanted to do a video on the character I ran in the Endless Delirium League. Um, it's like over in like an hour and a half, and I didn't actually get that far in this one. Um, so I figure I might as well do the video now while I still have access to the character, because once the League is voided, it's all gone, and I won't have anything except a PoE Ninja Link. I'm going to just mouse over all the pieces of gear, and talk about my experience on this one which was definitely quite a bit rougher than I bargained for um damn that's a bad ring but it's giving me attributes we're gonna run the highest tier map I have right now which is tier six only spent really a couple hours mapping on this one because I gotta say I got kind of hard filtered at uh, act three um it was something about the delirium. Well, I know what it is about the delirium. It, it makes, it's just a pretty much a scaling damage reduction. And I tried to do this corrupting fever gladiator, by the way. I tried to do this a little bit earlier. I definitely should have stuck with the, uh, whatchamacallit, like a leveling setup before I went into like, Trying to, I, I think Exsanguinate Traps is basically what helped me get through the Act 3 boss specifically. With smaller hurdles along the way, but that was quite a quite a journey there. Uh, to kill Dominus in Act 3. I mean, I've been, you know, I, uh, I've rage quit sessions of Path of Exile before. You know, you brick a tricky map, or you fuck up your maven fight or you know anything that took a bit of investment and didn't turn out exactly the way you wanted it to but i've never <clears throat> gotten consistently filtered at the same part um that being the dominus part i had to go back i did my lab before dominus which i never do i went back and i did the the library quest so i could get all the gems set it up properly Way more effort than I was used to for the little old axe. Um, and to me, I mean, I, I, I think it kind of highlights one of the weaknesses of this event, which was that I, I understand that Path of Exile is, you know, it lives because of its random generation and ability to reuse content. But I kind of wish they did, like, a scaling, like... Maybe even do like 1% Delirious all the way up through and then go like the second zone has two, you know, just scale it in some way because it really did feel bad. Also in the Conqueror fights too, I mean, it, it, sometimes it'll just be like at an 85 plus Delirious zone and you're like, damn, this is taking far longer than I thought it would. Um, yeah, I don't know, it just felt, I think it was cool, I mean, the I had fun. Um, once those growing pains were sorted out and I got to try out the Corrupting Fever Gladiator using the uh, Kinetic, what is it? Kinetic Blast? Kinetic Blast is really fun and punchy. It's a very interesting skill. Um, I'll go over what you need to make it work, but it's not much. And uh, in order to take more advantage of... Um, Auras and stuff like Tempest Shield. I'm still using uh, Purity of Elements because I'm leveling. Um, probably gonna die here. Well, it's just I actually don't want to die because I only have a little bit of time to hit level 80, which is probably all I'm gonna be able to do. Um, yeah, what was I talking about? Um, I'm using Exsanguinate in a Poet's Pen, just because um, plus levels are nice for an Exsanguinate, and it lets you. Um, not have to rely on a uh, spell slinger reservation. I leveled mostly with spell slinger, but uh, when I could afford the poet's pen, you know, this was a trade league, and um, as opposed to the Atlas Invasion event, this was uh, much more rich in terms of just raw currency that drops because of the way that the delirium works. Let's go over it. So yeah, in the poet's pen. I have Exsanguinate, Chain, and Efficacy. This would probably be Swift Affliction. Um, ideally, it would be Brutality um, with Efficacy. 
but um, this was fine. This was just to help us clear a bit, which you don't really need once you get the poacher's aim, um, because then your corrupting fever will... So, I don't know if you can see, but all those little spots, those um, area of effects will apply the corrupting fever. So it's actually really great for clear and can shotgun um, if like a boss is against a wall or something like that. So you get to build up the corrupting fever stacks really nice. Um, Flame Dash, Tempest Shield, Herald of Purity, um, Dash I'm actually not using anymore. Um, nothing really there. Tempest Shield just gives you a decent bit of spell block. And uh, if I push this further, I would go Glancing Blows and then Sanctuary. That would bring me up to about the 60s. And then I would have, uh, I would use this shield, I think. Uh, 83 life gained on block. Shields are really strong now. And uh, they don't have to be shaped to roll the uh, life gained on block affix. So I had a couple here that I was going to swap into, but this one just gave me some resistances, reduced uh, crit damage, pretty nice, and life. Um, here's the Corrupting Fever links, Brutality, Life Tap, Efficacy, and Swift Affliction. Life Tap is also in the Kinetic Blast, and, um, is also triggered by when your Exsanguinate gets triggered, so... I believe... It's, it's not one, it's every two attacks it gets refreshed, as you can see up there. <clears throat> and, uh, the fifth link, oh, the sixth link would be Empower, probably, if you could get it. Again, not enough time to do that. Pretty of elements I was using while leveling because I'm too lazy to fix the gear. The gear was getting okay, but I think the rings I really needed to replace. Um, pride is just increased physical damage taken, so build like this. That's what you want to do. Kinetic Blast is utility, so you get GMP, life gain on hit, and life tap. And yeah, that's basically the vessel you use to do all the damage. And that's a pretty straightforward and simple build. I will say that um, <clears throat> taking both of these here and here was necessary you kind of have to like you're mostly getting strength nodes while you travel um which is why you get iron will um so you're going to have even with like really good like decent attribute rolls in order to level all your gems up as much as you'll need you'll probably need this especially if you're leveling i think that's a big issue that a lot of people had with this sort of build is that they would like you know if your spell slinger gem can't level up that's going to feel really bad um so that's probably my advice is at least try and tag these two areas i got the 30 nodes here um otherwise yeah you can dip into the life wheel and fill it out if you really want um but obviously cluster jewels were at a premium here i didn't drop a single of the damage over time ones which would have been best but i have stuff like iron breaker and furious assault on a physical damage one it's a lot of damage you go resolute technique because you're not crit and yeah, I mean, I basically just followed a bunch of other things. Uh, cannibalistic Red is necessary, though. I kind of skipped on this way, way, way too much. Um, but Recover 2% of life on kill if you spent life recently is always going to be up, um, which is really good for mapping. Um, I don't know if you saw, if you noticed that the boss there, um, because, well, first off, the tagging the Corrupting Fever itself basically halves your health pool. And then every time you're, because of Life Tap and Exsanguinate, you're kind of middling around. I do have regen 2% of life while moving, but um, it's not that much. It's not really a recovery-based build like uh, an Inquisitor or something like that. And yeah, what else? I mean, yeah, there's a lot of better people, better players who have probably done better videos on this. I just kind of wanted to do a video on it to show, yeah, my struggles with it. Because, you know, obviously I didn't play that much. How much did I play, actually? Yeah, so I didn't play that much. I kind of... It was a bit burnt out after doing pretty much every non-hardcore league this month. Um, but um, overall, I kind of am a little burnt out on Path of Exile. Kind of going to enjoy the little break we get. I might play a bit of Scourge here and there just to get that 24th challenge. I doubt I'll hit 36. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I guess my closing thoughts on the December events are that like, I really like them generally. I hope we do a lot more of these events, not just in December. I really think a strength of Path of Exile is just sort of modularity where you can kind of, you know, just apply different league modifiers or different weird settings and have a really interesting and fun time. Um, I think a lot of people, it's, it's weird that it's voided for some people. I kind of got over that quickly because I don't really give a shit. Standard stuff just kind of 
is just chores that I'll never do, you know, I'm never going to actually sort out and clear my standard stash. I have some cool legacy shit there, I'm sure, but I don't know, it's not really important to me. Um, I know some people may prefer that uh, things don't get voided, but I think you got to realize that if it, it kind of limits the design space of what you can do with these special leagues if they're not voided. Um, obviously, like, this Delirium one has insane loot drops. Not really. I haven't actually seen many that insane myself because I didn't really push that hard. Um, but, yeah. I don't really think um, it's worth it to kind of hamstring the creative, interesting dynamics of a League event. Especially if it's, like, a 10-day event. Um, just because of, like, standard economy, whatever that means, you know. Um but yeah, like I said before, I do think there are some caveats to certain things like the Delirium League. Um, I think I get it that like RNG is an important part of the Path of Exile experience, but I think that maybe a bit more um, cohesion, maybe a bit more thought going into the scaling during the Axe would have kind of helped a bit. I know that the reaction, the initial reaction was pretty bad to this League because people were like, I want to see any dev from ggg beat this actually play through the axe in this because obviously wasn't tested and it's like honestly it probably wasn't tested they just kind of flicked the delirium switch on and we're like yeah okay which is fine but yeah you know whatever we get a new league in about a month um and it's gonna be a big one it's be exciting i'm probably not gonna do many more videos um unless i start like practicing like editing videos for like weird um, side content because the only build that I'm probably going to spend time finishing up in Scourge League is a Arakali's Fang um, Occultist, which is like not interesting unless I got the Squire, but like I'm not going to get enough money to do the Squire. But either way, I'm getting distracted and I have like an hour to get my last two levels. So I hit that level 80 threshold. See, look, people are already playing Scourge instead. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions about the build. I will not be able to um, <laughs> reference the build. I think I'll, I can't even link the POE Ninja link, so I'll, I guess I'll get a POB up um, in the description. But uh, yeah, let me know uh, what you thought of the leagues, uh, of the Delirium League and the rest of the events, and uh, what you're going to do to kill time until the next league. Um, so thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.